you enjoy making television with a character, I would look at it in recordings and look at uh, and see how I could improve it. And yes, I got to I got to actually loathe the character. After a while, he became a bit of a monster. But I realised I wasn't going to be able be able to get away from it. I knew it was it was part now part of my DNA, and I just had to make the best of it. He didn't. I don't think the character worked in the series when I look back on it, because I don't think uh, um, I don't I don't think it. He, he was fine for the gag and taking the hat off and everything, but to last put him up for 25 minutes, I don't think he was convincing enough. What is it about uh, performers? Sometimes with characters they create, or often with their, um, with their if they're ventriloquists, often with their, you know, their props. And, what is it that they suddenly start to really loathe the character after? Another character too well. And feel that, you know, he's... he's he, he, he's more part of them than they think he is. You know, he sort of takes over a bit. Um, is it typecasting at all as well? You only get oh, asked that, to do that, one that, thing. I mean, I wasn't allowed to do anything else. Right. The trouble was I wanted to do, yeah. and I did do other things on television, but nobody ever remembers. They all remember me doing that. I would arrive at, a, you know, to do a guest spot on Tom Jones Shaw, Silla Black, and I would go with something different to do. And they would say, well, I'm going to do the thing with that. That's what we really want you to do, and that's what the pub public want. And I, I just think, but they must be getting sick of it now, you know, after 10 years of this, seeing me do the same thing all the time. Stick up to here, though. And I would stick up to here as well. <laughs> you did You did make a brave decision to, to take a change. I think it was about 1980. You yeah. sort of decided well, to move I, away. I said, but I just felt I wanted to do something just a little bit different. And it came it came through, through illness, really. I mean, a, a friend of mine who had a little production company, Bunny Barron, um, he'd been poorly for a while and he died. And his widow didn't quite know what to do with the company. And she said, would I help her in a way? I knew them, you know, quite well. So I said, yes, that would be nice. I go a couple of days a week in the office in London and, you know, and, and um, help her put a few shows together, which I did, of course. I took over eventually, didn't I? Wouldn't I? <laughs> Why wouldn't I? I stayed with her for two years from 80 to 82. I was still working, still doing my stand-up, still going all over the country doing doing shows and stuff and TV. But, uh, you know, I had this little second job on the side which was helping to put shows on and producing shows, which I got to enjoy very much. And in 82, I went out on my own and formed my own production company, which I ran for five, between five and seven years. And then, um, which I also enjoyed very much doing, I enjoyed the production side, I enjoyed directing, I enjoyed the, uh, uh, I suppose I enjoyed the creative side of it very much, because it was allowing me to do something else, something I was allowed to be creative. Did you appear in the productions that you produced? Uh, very rarely. Um, usually I would, I would employ the, the acts for the show and direct them and put it on, and then walk away. So, Freddie, you mentioned earlier on about working with Peter Chelsom in the film Treacle, and then you went back and worked with him again on a very impressive comedy called Funny Bones. Can you tell us a bit about how you got that role and what it entailed? It was a trilogy of films, Treacle, Hear My Song, and Funny Bones that Peter made. I should have been in Hear My Song, but I was in the States at the time and actually couldn't, couldn't do it. But it all started in Blackpool in, in the early 60s when I was entertainment manager at the Metropole Butlins. And on the outskirts of the build on, of the building, on the um, part of the building up outside, were, were several little shops adjoining the Metropole, and one of them was called the Golden Age. Nice little sort of antique type shop, run by uh, K and Reg Chelson. And the, he also had a factory manufacturing these onyx tables and um, and uh, ashtrays and things. The lovely couple, actually. Anyway, I bumped into to, to K. A few years later, and she said her son was mad to get into show business, and there's anything I could help with. He was still at school. So I said, well, I'm doing a panto in Ipswich, and I auditioned him, and he was a nice young lad, 17 years of age. So he came to Ipswich, and a very nice lad, really nice, and he worked hard, and Kay came down to see him. And because he did the, uh, the panto with me in Ipswich, he then got his equity card which meant he could do, go out and do professional work. 
And not only that, but he also went to drama school. And because he had his equity card, he could get work. And then he finished up at the National Theatre as an actor, became a very good actor. Anyway, the bottom line was he wanted to be a director. And he remembered me from giving him his first job. And he said, I was going to be in every film he made. So we did this treacle film. Then he did hear my song. And then with that, he got the money to make Funny Bones. Because it was originally about my grandparents' act. Right? They did an act together with a thing called a paper slap routine. When my grandmother would hit it, my granddad across the face with a rolled up newspaper when he did a silly gag. Like, for instance, he used to come on Tuesday and say, you're late. He said, I'll be later still tomorrow. She said, why is that? He said, I'm not coming. And she'd hit him with the newspaper. <laughs> Slap, you see. He'd heard all these stories backstage in Ipswich, right? He remembered them, all variety of stories. So he's going to make a film. And he, he, he asked me to go along to a meeting with him and a drama writer um, called Peter Flannery, who wrote a wonderful series called Our Friends in the North. And he'd worked with Peter. And we sat down, anyway, and, and, and so Peter Flannery said to me, what's the difference between physical comedy and stand-up mic comedy? And I said, funny bones. So you have to have funny bones to do physical comedy. And he went, I was in it big time as part of a double act who had fallen on hard times, right? And he incorporated the paper slap routine into murdering the guy in it. And it became, it was a drug story running through it. It got a bit of a cult status from what I got. I mean, I'm when I'm walking around, and actors still come up to me, people come up to me and saying, I love that film that you did, Funny Bones. They still sort of remember it, you know. But that's really how it came it had about. had a big following because it had the, a young comedian, Lee Evans, in it. Lee well. Evans was, so his, that first, a whole new was his first film, yeah. yeah. We needed somebody who had Funny Bones. Yeah. Uh, and he actually booked him before he did his act. He'd come on the stage, Lee, and he was setting his props at this comedy club somewhere, and he did something with a member of the audience, a friend of his, you know, sort of waved or did a bit of business, and he thought, this guy's just right. And of course he was. Lee was absolutely brilliant in it. But he got a great cast together, you know, with Oliver Reed and, uh, and uh, Gigi herself, Leslie Caron, who I actually danced with in the studio. We had a waltz together. It was just... Absolutely magical. And of course, working with Jerry Lewis was lovely. Yeah. He was just uh, absolutely charming. They said he was difficult to work with. Not a word of it. He was just absolutely charming. Very professional. And my God, he taught me a lot. And then after that, it was like you moved away uh, from the industry and decided to go and run a pub. After I'd finished the production company, um, I, I closed that down. I think I'd got as much out of it as I could without really going big time into it. And I, I didn't feel as if I wanted to do that. And an opportunity came to work in the States, which I did. I didn't, couldn't really work in the States because I didn't have a work permit. But I worked on the cruise ships for about four or five years, which I enjoyed. When I came back, I called an agent I knew in Leeds to say I was back in town sort of thing. And I got a strange phone call back from this agent in Leeds, but the, the drama department said, Freddie, have you ever thought of doing any straight work? It was just before Funny Bones came along. Well, the Funny Bones was mooted, but it had taken 10 years to get off the ground. Um, so in the interim, this particular agent said to me, would you consider doing some straight work? I said, yeah. And she started to get me work immediately, Sharon Ashcroft, wonderful. So I did, I did lots of little acting bits and all sorts of stuff, then Funny Bones. And I just carried on from then. But when Funny Bones came, before it came out, it was a year before it came out, I was literally looking for something to do, I suppose. And I thought, what could I do? And a friend of mine suggested taking a pub and running it as an entertainment venue, right? He'd done it somewhere else. And he said, I think it would work for you. Well, I never intended to run it. You know, I would sort of own it and do all, all the entertainment side of it. Uh, it's a bit like a cruise ship, really. Mm. And that was the intention. It didn't quite work out like that. I couldn't get anybody to run it. So my wife and I finished running the, running the thing, which we didn't really want to do. And, it, and after 18 months, I'd had enough. And I was getting more sort of straight drama work then. 
you know, I was doing, I'm doing big tours around the country. So I couldn't really do both. So I gave the pub up. And you're not a great one for wanting to retire. You could retire, you're now in your 80s. No, I don't want to retire. What's, what, what's the point of retiring? You do commercials, you do drama, yeah. books, lectures on, <laughs> on, on comedy and showbiz. I think if you, if you don't keep active, you could just fade away. I mean, it's so easy to just sit in a chair and sit and watch TV every day. It's, that's the easy way out, I think. Freddie Parrot Face Davis is not ready to fall off his perch yet. <laughs> not ready to fall off his perch quite yet. Freddie, it's been lovely to have you here today. I'm so glad we've had a chance to talk. And what a life. Thank you for being here. It's been an amazing life. And I, when I look back, when I did the book and I, I had to look back on all those memories, I said to myself, yes, you, you have had a, you've had an amazing career, really. I am thankful for that. So are we. Thank you.